live at Intuition Brewing in downtown Wilmer today with Pastor Dane and Pastor Justin. What's up, world? What you got there? Some orange juice. Uh, Newest beer from Intuition, Bella Blood Orange. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going with, uh, of course, you have to drink the Benji Sponsor beer, Martin Ruther's Oktoberfest. That's what I'm doing right here. It's beautiful yeah. color. And there it is on the board. <sighs> Tastes like Luther. How did this come to be that uh, the Vingy beer is here at Intuition? Well, we had a group of guys that like to have fun together, and they all thought it'd be fun to brew a beer at Intuition and sponsor it on behalf of Vingy. And so we had a little fun trying to figure out how that would work, and all of it came to fruition a few weeks back. So. Now, brewer Michael Larson, is it? he's brewing right now. Did he hesitate at all? A church? No, a beer? He's like, yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what does it take to sponsor a beer? Are you paying for the ingredients? Is he paying you for the wonderful oh, name and idea? I mean, if you haven't seen the commercial, my Martin Luther impression is phenomenal. Just that oh. alone is what I'll be at. I did see the video. It's uh, special. <laughs> the more beer you drink, the better the commercial becomes. That's it's cool. amazing, yes. Yeah. Who got to decide what kind of beer is going to be? Because, you know, an Oktoberfest is a, a coppery, sort of ambery. I know we're in fall and all. How did that come about? That was all on Micah. Uh, he just brews different beers every couple of weeks, and, and that was the one coming up. and. We actually said, well, that's pretty good for Lutherans, you know, October tends to be a Lutheran month where we celebrate the Reformation, so it fit pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Luther tends to be a beer drinking guy. Uh, you know, to this just, day. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but at least Martin his, Luther himself, yeah. right? Like, he drank a lot of beer. His wife made beer that grew yeah. in their house, and so there's some deep connections to beer and Lutheran history and heritage and traditions. Was it always connected for him in his uh, his faith, or just uh, the guy liked beer? Well, this is a wonderful thing about being a Lutheran. I think you get to combine your everyday life and faith. And so he uh, is known for sitting down for big table discussions with people about faith and lots of topics around life and having a beer over that. So, yeah. I've always said like Martin Luther is kind of like the like every college. Uh, guy's favorite like theologian church father because he loved beer uh, he loved talking about beer he loved sex and he loved talking what? about sex and, uh, and he was incredibly vulgar on top of that too you know? oh. so, yeah. uh, subscribe to our blue channel podcast for more talk <laughs> about some of those topics it's uh, 1995 a month was he a monk mm -hmm. he was. what is it with monks and beer so actually, I know this from a little bit of uh, research with friends, uh, that monks often had to have a sort of side hustle to help pay for their living. And so, you know, some monks would pay for the monastery they're in with selling cheese, and some would set, do that by selling beer. Yeah, Who was the smart monk that decided to <laughs> sell cheese and beer? Because um, they go together. Yes. I, I, Probably plenty of them. Yeah, you have to know your community, right? That's right. Yeah. Always, yeah. right? Even as a church, yeah. right? Know your audience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, does your audience uh, approve of all of this uh, beer sponsoring and drinking? And well, because we're of course you know deep in the Midwest here in Minnesota, no one would ever share criticism directly to us. So yes, yeah. of course, yeah. everyone is passively aggressive uh, in favor of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like a few people have smiled loudly to us about it. So. Yeah. 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 But well, all good. How does that fit in? You know, I've thought how a lot of things can be for good and bad. Take our cell phones, for instance. Yeah. Or take this glass. I can enjoy a beverage, or I can smash it right, right in your forehead up there. Doesn't the Bible speak of uh, you know, moderation and caution? Yeah, and that Martin Luther would have said this too, that the goal is not to get drunk and hurt other people, but 
Uh, beer can be a wonderful tool to gather around and talk about real life things. And as long as you do that in moderation, I think it's pretty good and something to be celebrated. Right. Of course, there's folks that struggle more with you know certain tools than others, and right people have addictions to all kinds of different things, and so. For some people, I think it's something that they have to, to stay away from, and they, they know that about themselves and exercise some healthy boundaries. And for others, it's that, that good tool. I mean, the fact that Jesus himself uh, used wine as an example of giving himself away for the world speaks a lot to that it's okay to drink the common drink of the day. Mm -hmm. right. might, might we in October, Reformation Month, see a sort of reformed communion with a little, little <laughs> tiny glass of beer well, and maybe some best. pretzels. I'm not really willing to <laughs> confirm that yet. Yeah. Maybe it'll be I the mean, after party after a Vikings football game. Right. Over at Benji, we're filled with passive aggressive Minnesotans that don't share criticism directly, but there are limits to this, right? <laughs> there seems to be a theme on that going. Uh, the, the passive aggressive nature of Minnesotans. Yeah. Now, this one, we're, as you can see right here, Martin Bruther. First of all, who, who gets to claim that clever name? Chris Strand? I think Chris Strand is one of our members. Yeah. He came up with that one. Did this become a winner from a pool of names? Or was, like, what were some that didn't make the cut? Do you um, know? Or, the ones that were fun but just way too long were things like, we're better than the Catholics and you know it. <laughs> uh, we didn't think that would be fair to our um, wonderful Catholic brothers. Well, the Catholics got to have the lock on yeah. the beer before yeah. Martin Absolutely. Luther, right? Yeah. I mean, that, it, let's be honest. Yeah. There's a little history there where uh, Lutherans, Protestants actually came up with the idea of using hops uh, at the time where no one was brewing with hops, and they're like, we're going to take this one and kind of thumb our noses at the, the big church for saying this thing's no good. Yeah. I mean, you can ferment grass, right? That doesn't yeah. make it good. Yeah, yeah. Because hops at the time was thought of as kind of a weed, right? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Or make something delicious out of the ordinary. Yeah. What about, do you, do you recall any other names that didn't make it? Uh, Holy Hops. Holy Hops. There was one Jesus Juice. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that would work. Uh, I think we had Dingy Heretics, Holy Hellas. You know, there are lots of fun names to go around here. Yeah, but, you know, the Dingy members that came together for this, they're, they're creative, but their creativity is limited. So. Yeah. Now, I would call an Oktoberfest uh, a very sort of middle of the road mm -hmm. in hops, in flavor, in color. Yep. I love, I've actually brewed some uh, ambers yeah. and had very good success. But if either a really light beer or a really dark beer only existed in Martin Luther's time, then which do you think? What kind of guy would he be? Being a good German, he probably would have liked those dark beers that were mm -hmm. real hearty. So. Earlier when we were asking Micah what his favorite one was, uh, he, he was going a little stronger. I think the yeah. brewers like the yeah. heavier, darker, substantial beers. Yeah. And then sometimes they have to brew Pilsner, Pilsner or a seltzer yep. or a sour, right? Yeah. Sour. Yeah. You know, well, okay. In fact, do you remember what he told us the story about the oh. sermon sour? I do. Yeah, his wife kept telling him that he needed to brew a sour and he was kind of hesitant. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. It was no, sour. No. And she kept preaching at him that he had to do it. <laughs> yes. So sermon sour as opposed to Pastor Dane's sour sermons, which are always bad there. Usually this one tastes sour. really good. I had a little bit. Yeah, and, and you aren't really a beer drinker. I'm just... not a beer drinker. No, I'm more of like a bourbon whiskey guy. Uh -huh. uh, so you might like some of those barrel-aged, really heavy imperial beers. Yeah, my problem is I don't like the hops. I'm too, you know, I don't know, going back to the comments about like how we took the weed as Lutherans, like maybe I'm too Catholic in that way, right? I think like, so. So 
how would you describe this as a non-beer drinker? You said, oh, hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> how would I describe it? Yeah, as pretty good. It's I pretty know. good. You know, I think I had heard you should be kind of talk about a caramel flavor or something. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I'm not refined enough. Well, yeah, it's yeah, good. Like wine. You go, there's a little, there's a little bit of a woodiness yeah. and, a, and a caramelness mm-hmm. caramel to it. Caramel wood. All I smell in this one is hops, so... And that one was what again? A uh, very hoppy Bella's Blood Orange IPA. How dare you not drink the Martin Ruther? Yeah, well, I've had about three of them already. Oh, so. This morning? I, <laughs> <laughs> gentleman never never tells tales after school. <laughs> I see. Uh, we were joking earlier that this podcast might need a jingle. Mm. We'll look into that. But what about a jingle for Martin Ruther? Vinji's Martin Ruther beer. <laughs> if not a jingle, at least a, a tagline. Commercial well, it's okay for people to like beer. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably pretty decent. You yeah. know the real men of genius? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. How about real men of clergy? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Some rock and roll back. Yeah. I do think Luther would be proud of the. You know, Vinci taking like and, and working with Micah to come up with just like a really good beer. Yeah. I mean, he talked a lot about like the whole point of being like a Christian in, in the real world wasn't to make every real world thing Christian and put like like he talks about like a shoemaker doesn't need to put little crosses on the shoes, but you just you make the best damn shoe possible so like that you know, society benefits from your work and that's what Christians are supposed to do. So. You guys made the best damn Oktoberfest possible, yeah. at least for Wilmer, Minnesota. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, I say we go on a quest yeah. to yeah. be sure. What yes. could be better than yes. Martin Ruther? Right? I mean, like a 100 mile, 200 mile radius? We yeah. just go hit them. Oh, we got to go to Germany. Sample. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be passing an extra special plate. That's on right. Sunday, Donate so. today to yeah. send the three of us to Germany. <laughs> to <laughs> for a very beer. important podcast. Yes. Oktoberfest in Germany. You know what, though, when you mentioned the shoemaker, like a Christian shoemaker doesn't have to put a cross or a fish on every shoe. I've thought of that with, you know, Christian artists who sing all songs about faith in Jesus and God and worship. Can't a Christian artist just sing a pop song about being in love? Absolutely. Yeah. Right, and I think I mean clearly Luther would say that, and I feel like it, it harkens back to themes of Jesus too, where it's like Jesus's entire ministry is about taking like deep, profound truths about God and summing them up in, with a language that people can understand, with examples that people can understand. You know, uh, yeah, with him. I think Martin Luther was very much a person of the people, and he wanted regular, everyday people like us to read the Bible. And also to meet people where they are and sing songs while they have beer. I think we're learning through this series of podcasts, even if that's kind of what you guys are. How do you balance the modern churches being approachable with the deeper spiritual focus or maybe the seriousness that some also traditionally want? I think the key, for me at least, is to take the things that traditionally have been really important and really meaningful for people, like those things, those deep, profound spiritual truths that, that maybe have been expressed in the past with words and songs that, that have, you know, that are really big words that people don't understand anymore. Like, how do you take those deep, profound truths and make them understandable in real world? now and I think like that's the entire point of my job I think as a pastor and as a preacher and again it harkens back to Jesus coming in and you know more than anything else Jesus taught in parables you know let's take a story about a woman losing some money like how many times have you lost some money in your life right like that's relatable I can get behind that I can understand what you're trying to tell me I think there is a balance though between you know there are these things that are really meaningful and core to who we are for Lutherans, that's grace, and then God meets you right where you are in this world. We would never, ever shy away from that. And we want to translate that into ways that people understand and make sense with who they are in their everyday life. 
And if you can bring folks together over a Benji Martin Bruther Oktoberfest, then why not? Why not? Now, so we all had one of those. Beer keep. We want to try one of them all. What? <laughs> <laughs> you want what now? He says. I thought maybe you'd just laugh out <laughs> Thank you for letting us uh, invade your space here. How long will Oktoberfest be on tap? Uh, Let's go. Yeah, I would guess probably a couple months is usually about what they're on. You will get us through the fall with Oktoberfest. That's how much you guys drink. Like, yeah. how, much, <laughs> how much did you do? With I did four barrels. Four barrels. So, uh, eight games. Eight, eight games? So, yeah. Uh, That's the language you understand. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> a barrel is uh, 31 gallons. So if this becomes insanely popular and it's gone next week, because Dane's going to be here a couple of times, yeah. like, uh, what happens? Do you make more or do you kind of move on to the next thing? I'll probably, if we went through that much, I would set aside a couple of things so we would get to uh, Into October. October. <laughs> yeah. If you get to like October 25th and you still got two kegs, give us a call. We'll, uh, yeah, no, yeah. we'll help you out. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that nothing you know, lingers into November. <laughs> thank you, Micah. Yeah. And thank you for watching Beyond the Altar from Intuition Brewery. What up, gentlemen? Cheers. Cheers. Come on, Prost. now.